It is Friday, the 23rd of September, and this is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. Yesterday, we were introduced to Esau and Jacob, the twins born to Isaac and Rebekah. We learned how Isaac and Rebekah have chosen favorites, and the division that was even manifest in the womb now continues to divide these two and threaten the promise of God. We're told this kind of humorous story that gives us a very quick way of understanding how different these two people are. We're told once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field. He was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. And then there's a note that says, therefore, he was called Edom, which means red. We're also told yesterday that we, he was called red because he had red hair. There's lots of reasons Esau gets this name, apparently. The red stuff probably refers to a lentil stew. Jacob, we also get to know in this text, because his response to his brother is not, sure, here's some stew, but he says, first sell me your birthright. You see, as the oldest child, even if only older by a second or two, Esau has the birthright, meaning that he is in charge in the place of his father. He's the one who directs the household in the place of his father. If he dies or is disabled or is just not around, Esau is in charge. So Jacob sees a way to supplant his brother, which is what his name means to jump over him and to let the secondborn have the birthright. This ongoing pattern that we've seen since Cain and Abel and Ishmael and Isaac now is repeating itself here with these two. Jacob is a wheeler and a dealer. He says to Esau, for your birthright, you can have some stew. Esau's response gives us a little insight into his character. He's not a person of great depth, we might say. He doesn't look at the consequences, for his response is, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? If I starve to death right here before you, which he's likely not going to do, what use is my birthright? Jacob said, swear to me first. So Esau swears. He sold his birthright to Jacob. Here, you be the oldest. Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. He eat and he drank. Jacob was hospitable. Then he rose and went his way. In this way, we're told, Esau despised his birthright. Esau is showing signs of not being the kind of person that Abraham and Isaac are, and people committed to hospitality, people committed to living the civilized life of tending sheep and goats and making for a prosperous way. Instead, Esau wants to hunt, to be out in the field, and to be free of all the cares of the world. The ancient birth order is really more of an accident, a tradition, that God really doesn't seem to be bound by. The second born, by constantly being the one who gets God's blessing, gives us a message about God. As the rabbis will teach in subsequent generations, the second born is always a sign of the widow, the orphan, the resident alien among us, those people who are pushed to the outside because they didn't get the luck to be in the first position. This is who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is, the God of Sarah, Rebecca, and those who will come after. God does not turn aside because you happen to have been the firstborn. God looks into the heart of his people and finds the one to bear the covenant that God chooses. We are never fated into our existence. God is always enlivening us in new ways. Jacob and Esau may think that they're in control and have control over this whole transaction, but God is working in the background. Jacob is being lifted up even though he's the second born, the outcast. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, you show grace and mercy to those who have no hope, who have no birthright, who have no place at the table. And yet you, Lord, find ways to bring us close. Keep us ever mindful that no matter what accident of history has put us in our place, no matter what birth order or place of birth has made us prosperous, you don't worry about those things. You find your faithful people and you pass on the covenant to them. We give you thanks. In Jesus' holy name, amen.